السلام عليكم بسم الله بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم May Allah bless you وجزاكم الله خيرا for your attendance Thank you to all those who traveled from far away distances and even if you're from Baltimore may Allah still reward you for that as well and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this convention the most successful one yet to come and may Allah bless all the volunteers, wonderful MC, and all those behind the scenes that made this possible. And we also appreciate our wonderful ASL interpreter for her work. May Allah grant her Jannah. I mean, all right. I hope she mentioned it. Do you think she mentioned it? Inshallah. Excellent. All right. Fantastic. The topic is, what was the topic? I'm just joking. Okay. It's about something about Islam, all right? Humility in authority. But before I go right to it, I want to ask you a couple questions, inshallah. Did you know that there are times when you should step up and seek authority? And do you know that there are times where you need to step down and let others seek authority? You may say, is it such a big deal that this is a topic at a main session event? Absolutely. A man went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet is giving a talk. Just imagine I'm talking right now. And all of a sudden someone from the corner of the event says, Brother Majid, what's the sign of Al-Mahdi coming? In the middle of my session. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he was talking, a guy said, Oh Rasulullah, ready? When is the day of judgment? What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? Did he pause? answer the question did he rebuke him no he continued the talk as if no one spoke the sahaba were talking to one another do you think rasulullah heard him or do you think he and he got angry he ignored him or did he just not hear him at the end of the lecture ready at the end of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam speech he asked where is the one who asked me when is the day of judgment that means he heard him but he moved on so the man says, Ha ana ya Rasulullah. Here I am. I'm the one who asked that question. So the Prophet sallallahu told him, the day of judgment will come إِذَا ضُيِّعَتِ الْأَمَانَةِ When there's no more trust on earth, when treachery and betrayal becomes the norm, then the day of judgment is at the door. Some of you right now may be sitting and say, why is Brother Majid referencing this hadith when his talk is about humility and authority, what does trust have to do with this? Right, inshallah? The man followed up with another question. He said, Ya Rasulullah, give me a tangible sign. Like, give me a sign that the trust is no longer there. Then he says, إِذَا وُسِّدَ الْأَمْرُ لِغَيْرِ أَهْلِهِ فَانْتَظِرِ السَّاعَةِ When now you see people not qualified for leadership and authority, they take positions of leadership and authority, the world is coming to an end. One more time, when people who are not qualified for leadership take these positions, this dunya is coming to an end. To show you how critical the situation it is about leadership. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I'm sure many of you have heard this before, is Islam uh, very much encouraging for you to become a leader? As the majority of the hadith and the ayat, is it about praising yourself and say, I got this and choose me? Is that what Islam majorly about? No. The default, no. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I will clarify before people get upset and leave the session. Let me finish, inshallah. One time in an authentic hadith, a man said, I walked into the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with my two paternal cousins. So my cousins told Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, please give us authority over such and such location that we conquered as Muslims, we took over this land. Make me the mayor, make me the leader of the financial department. Choose me, Ya Rasulullah ready to hear what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? He said, Inna wallahi la nuwalli ala hadha al-amali ahadan sa'alah. Wallahi, I will never give such position to someone who asked for it. Then he says, Wala ahadan harasa alayh. 
and I will never give it to someone that was desperate just for that leadership. Brother, Jazakallah khair. But your talk is about Prophet Yusuf and humility and authority and we have in the Quran, Yusuf alayhi salam says, قَالَ جَعَلْنِي عَلَىٰ خَزَائِنِ الْأَرْضِ إِنِّي حَفِيظٌ عَلِيمٌ Yusuf went, applied for a position of the secretary of treasury of the entire country of Egypt. Not just applied and says, choose me to lead the entire nation, which was a very wealthy nation at that time. May Allah lift the hardship from our brothers and sisters in Egypt and Gaza and all around the world. Not just he applied, he praised himself. He said what? Inni hafidun alim. So brothers and sisters, when he says, I'm trustworthy, I know my stuff. How do we re reconcile between what Allah is saying, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Allah says, don't you ever praise yourself. And the hadith that says, we will never give authority to those that apply for it. And then in the Quran, Allah praises that discussion. How do we reconcile? Yusuf السلام, pushed himself to be the leader, number one, because he knew no one around him is qualified. No one is even close to that. Yusuf السلام, upbringing was in the house of Al Aziz, the financial minister of Egypt. And he saw who's the next man up. And he's, he saw who's on the ballot. And he saw who's being funded. And he realized none of them deserve it. None of them are qualified for it. In that case, he felt obligated that now I have to step up. Now I have to go through and say, I'm the one for that job. Number two, when he now puts on his resume an expert in Java, an expert in C++ and whatever the case may be, he put the qualities that matter to the job. He says, I am Hafiz, I'm very trustworthy. When it comes to money, you have to have amana. I am hafiz. I know very well the halal from the haram. I am hafiz. I will show up to work early. I am hafiz. I promise not to put, do not disturb on my phone when I'm supposed to pick up the phones. That's hafiz, but that's still not enough. Because some of us can come early to work, do a great job, but you don't know how to do the job. We might be people that do itikaf in the musalla of your corporation. I've seen it happen before. May Allah make it easy for us, right? I walked in one time to pray dhuhr at one of the companies I worked at and I saw a brother sleeping. They said, Akhi, what are you doing? He's like, I'tikaf. Allahu Akbar. I'tikaf at lunchtime, right? So he might be in a way, يعني, ha, hafiz, but to an extent. But that's not enough. Do you have someone in your family, for example, uh, they tell you, you know what? I want to drive 20 miles away because they're selling an item $10 less than the store across the street. You heard that before? Yeah. So then 20 miles, that's Hafiz. But what is that individual missing? Alim, knowledgeable. The knowledgeable partner spouse says, listen, according to the IRS, the standard mileage rate of reimbursement is 0 0.67 cents per mile. And 20 miles costs $13.40. So in essence, you buying the item from across the street, Though it's $10 more, you saved $3.40. And I lost half the crowd, alhamdulillah. That's why none of you are qualified to be the financial ministers. Allahu Akbar, right? So here, yes, you're trustworthy. I, this person saved them at all costs, but there's knowledge that has to come in. It might be cheaper to go to the next store that is more expensive. And I have this example as well. Some people may have that aspect. I really want to help out. I will choose a makeup example. Can I do that? Will I, will I get canceled? May Allah make it easy. Say I mean. So let's say someone, for example, wants to, uh, a sister wants to buy a lipstick that is called Charlie or Charlotte Tilbury. Allahumma barik. But then, mashallah, sisters can relate. Alhamdulillah. That's fantastic, right? By the way, there's a review. There's ratings for every speaker. So make sure five stars after this. Jazakallah khair on the app. All right. <laughs> La, 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 may Allah protect us, right? Then someone else, miskin, wants to buy from Sheen. But anyhow, but the point being here is that you have to know, maybe one quality brand is better than five cheaper brands. And let's proceed, bi'ibnillah. So he says, inni hafidun, I am trustworthy, I am honest, and I am alim. I know money. I know how to buy and sell. 
I know what's the right stock to invest in. The ilm comes in, brothers and sisters, and that's very critical to all of us. He could have said, and I am Jamil. He's the most handsome man ever walked on earth, but that is not important for the job. He could have said, I'm a very generous, kind human being. My mom and dad love me, but that doesn't matter for the job. You go and you propose to someone and you tell them, you know what, I do this, I do that. And by the way, I, for example, amazing at FIFA. The guy will very likely say you rejected, you're denied. You apply for a job that is specific to financials and you put in your resume, I'm 6'2". What's the point of that? That might actually disqualify you because it looks like you're full of yourself. May Allah forgive us. So he says, إِنِّي حَفِيظٌ عَلِيمٌ So now we have a picture of when to go up to authority and when to step down. And before you step down, if now you're hearing this, Allah, I might be hafiz. Everybody loves me in the masjid, but I should not be on the board. Correct? I'm a big time donor. It doesn't mean you know how to run a masjid or run the imam position. May Allah forgive us. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. So here, Yusuf alayhi salam made it and he was hired. So now the second part of the talk, which is humility. Khalas, you made it to the top. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. How do you maintain your humbleness? Three parts from Surah Yusuf. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَىٰ يُوسُفَ آوَىٰ إِلَيْهِ أَبَوَيْهِ When the family of Yusuf came from Jerusalem into Egypt, he received them. He was not embarrassed of who mom and dad are. Remember mom and dad when they used to drop you off to school and now, mashallah, you graduated and sometimes they wear clothing that do not match and they show up to your graduation. You're like, stay home. Right, your embarrassment. لا أهلا وسهلا I receive my mom and dad. Then he says, ادخلوا, come in. Come in where? ادخلوا مصر إن شاء الله آمينين. Look at that, إن شاء الله. Though he's the most powerful of people in all Egypt, he didn't say, go Egypt, no one will mess around with you. He didn't say, mom and dad, my siblings, go to Egypt and you'll be just fine. He did say that, but there's something he added to it. What was it? Excellent, inshallah. And that's real humility. The higher up you go in the ladder, in whatever place you may be, the more you realize, I always need Allah. So someone says, you are a CEO at uh, Microsoft or CFO or whatever the case is, and the guy comes all the way to Seattle headquarters, and he tells you, would you be able to hook me up with a job? The guy, the CFO says, I got you, bro, for sure. Just give me your resume. I, I'll get you a job in no time. Too confident because he does not comprehend how can I not get him a job as a CFO. Yusuf is the financial minister, secretary of treasury for the whole nation, and he knows, inshallah. If Allah wants, it will happen. It's not up to me. So may Allah allow you and I to always remember that. A brother comes and says, bro, you're going to kill it. You're going to kill it in your lecture. What do we say? Inshallah. Right? Because all of a sudden, what happens? The mic may not work. Right? It's going to be quite embarrassing. Allah can cut off the mic. Allah can cut off the way of not being able to speak. I could have forgot my notes. So many things can happen. Inshallah can change the world. Wallahi, no exaggeration. Look at this authentic hadith. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Prophet Sulaiman, Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam said and made a promise and an oath. His intention is to get married, to have righteous children, to become soldiers, to fight fi sabilillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala and lift the oppression off of earth. That was his goal. So he said in his gathering, Wallahi la atufanna layla. Tonight I will approach my spouses and in hopes they all become pregnant. And they all deliver boys. And they all become old enough to be soldiers. Four layers of dua. Did you see that? So then what happened? He approached his spouses. Out of all the ones that he had, only one became pregnant. When she delivered, the one lady that became pregnant, she delivered a child that was deformed. And he died at a young age. What's the, in the world are you telling us this story for? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I swear by Allah, Wallahi, if Sulaiman Alayhi Salam said, In Sha'a Allah, if Allah wills, all his wives would be pregnant, all would deliver baby boys, all children would become old, all will fight for Sabirullah. Three words would have changed destiny. Just show Allah the brokenness. Ya insha'Allah. Of course, Sulaiman unintentionally forgot, subhanAllah. 
So here, brothers and sisters, the humble of insha'Allah, the other matter of humility, this is a litmus test to see, are you full of yourself or not? Okay, be confident, there's nothing wrong with it. You go to a job, go for it. Tell them I'm this and I'm that. But there's a point where you broke, you, you break yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another litmus test, ready? He says, وَقَالَ يَا أَبَتِ هَذَا تَأْوِيلُ رُؤْيَايَ مِنْ قَبْلِ Oh my father, what is happening to me is the interpretation of the dream when I was young. Do you guys know the dream? The sun and the moon were prostrating to Yusuf and the rest of the stars. How many stars? Eleven stars. So how many children did Yaqub have? Twelve. Yusuf was a twelfth, subhanAllah. So he says, oh my father. No, he didn't say, oh father. He says, ya abati, my dear beloved father, my habibi. So this shows me that the more you are closer to Allah, the higher you up in this world, the more humble you are, not just to Allah, but to your parents. Let your parents and your family be the first ones to benefit from your first paycheck. Let your mom and dad and your siblings be the first one to benefit when you get that promotion. When you have something that is a good news, share it to those who love you and no one loves you more than your family. So he says, Ya Abati, oh my dear beloved father. And look what he said, Yusuf alayhi salam at the end and the third and last as a litmus test of our humility in leadership. Rabbi qad ataytani min al mulk. Ya Allah, all this is from you. Ya Allah, may Allah make you and I remember that the meal you had today is from Allah, not from your own job. Yesterday, did you guys have breakfast today or lunch? Raise your hand. It was probably one of the most expensive lunches you had in your life. I know. You probably paid $24 for a small french fry, subhanAllah. So as you're paying this, you say, Alhamdulillah, that I had the capacity to pay that amount of money when many people across earth cannot be able to afford that. So you say, Allahumma lak alhamd, Ya Allah, help me be grateful. So the thing is that the higher up we go, to be very frank with all of us here, inshaAllah, the higher up we go, Sometimes we start feeling this is because of my grinding, my hard work and the means that I've taken, which is true, but it's very concerning when Allah is not in that sentence. When you don't say it's because of Allah's help, then my effort. So here he says, Rabbi qad ataytani, all this is from you, Ya Allah, min al-mulk, and you taught me, wa'allamtani, how to interpret dreams. Yusuf alayhi salam related success to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to conclude, some of us may be desperate for leadership roles. The question is to be answered, why do you want to be the MSA president? Why do you want to lead Salah? And that needs to be answered. Are you the one and only qualified? Because if you don't step up when you should, you'll be held accountable. And that's what our shaykh taught us, Shaykh Al-Bari Yahya, one time he told us, he told us, Brother Majid and others, if you are in a gathering and you're about to pray Salah, and you know for a fact that you're the best one to read Quran and Tajweed, and you know the rules of the Salah, if you lost your wudu, how to exchange and who leads, and you do not step up and you know no one else is qualified, and someone else becomes the Imam and you're shy and you have the wrong type of humility, and that person makes mistake, you are held accountable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah allow you and I to be able to have the priority and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. And if we messed up, fix it today before a day that will come that the money of the world will never save us. So may Allah forgive us and thank you for your patience. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.